Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is an introductory video that shows you how to set up Python for the Macintosh. In particular, setting up Python for use with this course using deep learning with TensorFlow and Keras. Even if you're not taking this class, this might be useful information to you on how to set this up on a Macintosh if you want to use your Mac for, for deep learning. In this section, we're going to just see how to set it up for the CPU, but I will have a follow-on one where I show you how to... So if you go to Module 1 for my class, this shows you the general flow for how you're going to set this up. We will use the Anaconda release or package of Python. And once you have that installed, largely from the command line, you're going to run these other um, things to install everything that you, that you might need. Now, what you want to be uh, pay attention to is these two version numbers here. We're using TensorFlow 1.2 and Keras 2.0.6 for this particular semester. However, I'll keep this recording up for subsequent semesters. Make sure you refer, refer to the web page here so that you're installing the correct version of Python for the current um, the current run of this class. First thing you want to do is we're going to go to get Anaconda Python or before we even do that I'll show you basically from a from a command prompt this Mac I recently reinstalled it so I figured this was a good time to record this video there is, there's probably a Python on here, but it's going to be the one that Apple provided. If we look at, uh, uh, basically seeing, seeing which version this has. Yeah, this is a, this is a 2.7. It's not even doing particularly what I, what I want it to do. So we'll just go ahead and install um, a copy of Anaconda over top of it. So if you go to Anaconda, which I have a link to, you we're going to install the latest. Always install the latest of this. This is not going to really affect compatibility with, with the current class. We'll choose Mac OS because that's the type of computer that I'm presently on. And this class makes use of Python 3.6. So we'll go ahead and download 3.6. And they give you a chance to, um, to get added to their mailing list. Anaconda is a cool company. I am on their mailing list, but I don't need to be on there again. So this downloads. This is a decent sized file over 500 megabytes. So this, this takes a moment to completely download. All right, that is downloaded. So let's go ahead and open the package file that we just got. And this is going to guide us through the installation steps. I believe we pretty much just follow what it, what it asks for, but I'll let you know if we need to vary. So we'll go ahead and continue. Of course, they give you the lengthy readme. We'll continue. The license will continue. And yes, I accept the license. No real choice there. So here's an option that they that they basically give you. Um, you can install for you only. You can install for all users of this computer, but you need So I'm going to choose to install it on my Macintosh hard drive. Let's see, what folder are they choosing? They are putting it, they're putting it right into the root section of the hard drive. So we'll probably need an administrator uh, permission for that. We will go ahead and continue. going to take nearly two gigabytes of space and we will go ahead and install. Now it is installing this to a location. This is 
perhaps a difference from the Windows um, installation. The Windows installation of this generally suggests that you install it as a specific user. That way you don't need administrator privileges to add things to it. Here they are installing it as, as admin. So I have to um, I have to basically enter my administrator password to let them know that it's okay to install it to a place outside of my, my user directory. So I'll just provide that. And then the installation begins. All right, we now have Anaconda installed. And they give you the option to remove the Anaconda installer to the trash can. It's a good thing to do. I need it no further. Let's go to a terminal. Let's go to a new terminal. Hopefully it finds the Python I want, otherwise we have some path configuration perhaps to do. Yes, so this is good. And that's what you should see. Python 3.6.3, um, we're running Anaconda Python. So I'll go ahead and quit that. By the way, to quit Python, when you run it from the command line, you execute a function called quit. If for some reason you're not seeing Python or you're seeing the old version of Python, you would need to modify your um, bash profile. Um, look for information on that and you would add to the path. So inside of that file, you can see it was already added by Anaconda. So that line was not previously there. You would need to add a line somewhat like that. So let's go ahead and complete the rest of the installation for this. And again, we're, we're on module one for this class. So here's the information. So we will use Jupyter Notebooks a lot in this class. It's sort of, it's almost an IDE. It's not quite an IDE. It is essentially what you're looking at right now. You're seeing a web page. This is a Jupyter Notebook that I created that has, it lets you mix code and markdown. So it's, it's pretty cool. If you do want to use an actual full-blown IDE, you still need to do all of this, but then you need to install something like um, PyCharm or Spider are two of the, the big ones that I that I know of. You could even conceivably use an editor like uh, VS Code or Atom. So I'm going to basically just type these commands into there and we'll, we'll, we'll get a, um, an installation of it. Oh, except I need one more ahead of this. So I need conda install Jupyter. I might, I'll probably need to sudo these, but let me see what this does first. So it attempts to install. Okay, as you try to install these, you will see this occasionally, and this is fine. It'll say package um, already in the environment. So apparently they're, in, they're including Jupyter Notebooks now with this. So this command here, we'll do that in a moment, but let's go ahead and install the rest of these. So some of these are going to be already installed, most likely. 
And there's two different ways that you install things with Anaconda. You can use Conda install or pip install. I won't get into the differences between those, but some of these we do have to use Conda to install them. So let's go ahead and do SciPy. So this one does need to be installed. So I'm going to say yes. Now, if you do get errors saying you need administrator access to do this, you can also do sudo conda install for all of these. You would just put sudo in front of it. And then you're going to be prompted for your administrator password. But it doesn't seem to be requesting that, so we'll continue with it as it is. It must have that authentication already, already sort of locked in. So I'm going to pip install sklearn. These are all the modules that we, we will be learning about this semester. Pandas. Pandas is already there. Pandas data reader. You always want to make sure it ends with something saying successfully. Then we're going to install matplotlib, which gives us some graphics. Requirement already satisfied. That's good. I doubt pillow is already there. That gives us some graphical capabilities that we're going to need for images. Oh, it is already there. They've, they've added quite a few of these. I'll probably eventually update my list and take off the ones that are already in the current the current releases, but they've, they've increased the default um, offering with Anaconda clearly. We'll get requests. You use requests to send HTTP requests. We'll, we'll use it for some web services. This is also used for you to run the little script that submits your assignments. Already satisfied. We need um, H5PY. That is a binary file format that, we're, that, that we use to store Kira's neural networks. Oops, pip install. Already satisfied. Okay, now just these last two. We're going to do um, TensorFlow and Keras. So I'll do pip install TensorFlow. Now, if you're not, if you're doing this just for your own use and not proceeding along with my class, you may want to just do pip install TensorFlow because that will tell it to install just the, the latest of TensorFlow. But if you're running with the current semester of my class, look on my website, see these two lines here and see which versions we're using. I will follow along with what the course is doing. So the next thing we're going to do is I am going to go ahead and grab the, the latest version of the, uh, of the class files. If you're on my GitHub page, which I am here, if you go to the main um, page here, you can do clone or download. Now, if you're more advanced with, with Get, you'll probably want to clone it. If you don't know how to clone, don't worry about it. This class is not really about get, so we're going to just download a zip. This downloads all of the material for this class in one shot. So you'll have all of the lecture materials. You won't have the videos, those are on YouTube, but you'll have links to all of them.
Okay, once we have that, I will... It should be in your downloads folder. These are some other software packages that I was installing, but this T81558 Master, that's the course material. And in there you see pretty much everything you need. I am going to... This is bad in practice, but I'm doing this just temporarily. So I'm just going to run it out of the downloads directory, but you'll want to move it to some other more permanent location on your, on your computer. But I'll just go back to the command prompt and I'll cd into downloads. And I'll see cd into t81 into my class. So now I'm in here. And now I'm going to do that Jupyter Notebook command that we saw before. So I'll, I will actually launch a Jupyter Notebook. And it's important to understand at least a little bit what's going on here. So you have started a Jupyter Notebook. And here is that terminal window that you started it out of. All we did here is when, when we entered this, it started a web server. This is kind of the new way that lots and lots of applications are, are released. So notice where this web, so since it started a web server, it launched a web browser. And notice where the URL is, localhost. Normally websites are on port 80, but it's a little dangerous trying to take over port 80 on a computer, especially a Unix computer like, like a Mac, because on Unix you have to be root to run 80. But here we're doing just 8888, so this is actually a, a, web, a website. Later, and, and the whole IDE using advanced JavaScript is ran through a website. This is really cool. Any Python that you run will run on wherever the web server happens to be. Now, it's on the same computer as what you are running, so you're just running stuff on your own computer. However, later in this class, we will see that I will use AWS instances to use, a, to use very advanced GPUs, and you will be able to basically launch something in the Amazon cloud, and that will be available, in, but you'll still have the web browser running on your computer, so you'll, you'll run your script completely in the cloud. Some now, a lot of these class sessions I recorded at the Washington University studio. You can tell that I have the playing background behind me. I'm at my home office right now using because I'm using a Macintosh and I'm installing low-level system software, so I don't want to do that to the studio computer. But when I run from the studio computer, you'll very often notice that I'm running from jupiter.heatandresearch.com. Just so that I don't have to install all this stuff onto the studio computer, I just hit it off in the Amazon cloud through my um, uh, through my domain name. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this. So since we're we have this locally, we can actually run it and see the version numbers there. We should be able to run it, and you'll see that it's using TensorFlow backend, which is good. That's what Keras should be using for the way we set it up. And it'll print out these version numbers, and you'll want to make sure that you get similar version numbers to mine. Okay, if you get these, you have successfully installed, installed Python. So this is... This is the information that you will need to get Python installed for your um, on a Macintosh computer. Thank you for watching the uh, thank you for watching the video, and if you're interested in learning more about TensorFlow, please subscribe to the uh, to my uh, channel or watch the and or watch the uh, the course videos. Thank you very much.